So Bitcoin's pulled back to 121K despite hitting a new all-time high at around 126K just a couple days ago. And everyone's been asking, are we overheated? The past few days, I've been building a new metric on the website called the composite on-chain risk metric. So it combines 10 different key on-chain metrics that's been combined into a simple score from zero to one. And right now, we're sitting at about 88 out of 100. It's fairly elevated right now. And so what's interesting is that we haven't yet hit these extreme levels that we've seen in prior cycle tops. Those were at around 95 to 100. So what does this actually mean? Today, I'm going to be breaking down this new metric, showing you how it works and what it's telling us about where we are, where we are in the cycle right now. So let's dive in. Right now, we're in that reddish to orange zone, the high, very high risk level around 0.88. So here's how these zones sort of work, right? So when you go on, go down into these 0, point, 0 to 0 0.2 range, that's the very low risk range, the dark blue. That's essentially where we've seen historical extreme fear capitulation type events start to occur just on the on-chain, uh, from an on-chain perspective. From 20 to 40, that's still in that low risk territory. You know, bear market conditions starting to accumulate back into profitability. And then we also have neutral zones around 40 to 60, where the bull market starts to sort of, sort of heat up. And then around that zero, uh, around the 40 to 60 range, you start to get uh, around the, the neutral, or the, sorry, 60 to 80 range, you start to see sort of this high risk level start to play out. And then bull market starting to heat up a little bit. And then 80 to 100, we have very high risk, so elevated conditions, you know, prior bull market tops territories. So at, at around 88 right now, we're clearly in this sort of late stage cycle behavior, not only from a timing perspective, but also from these on-chain risk metrics, right? So, but let's compare this to prior market cycle peaks. So the first, first peak in 2021, we actually hit about, uh, if, if I zoom in there, I would see around 97. So in the, yeah, so 97, we hit around 97 in the first peak, around 57K. And then in November, it peaked at around zero, uh, 94. And then in 2017, it peaked at around 98 at the peak. Even back in 2013 and 2011, we saw it go up to 98 in 2013, around 0 0.95 in 2011. So we're at 88 right now. That's elevated, yes, but we haven't really hit those 95 to 98 extreme euphoria levels. Just from this metric, it's just one metric that you can look at on the website that have historically marked cycle tops. And you can also see that we're above this red band here, which is the plus one standard deviation statistical band, this red line right here. That confirms we're in statistically overheated territories from from a historical perspective alone, just from this data, data set, okay? So now let me show you why and how this risk metric works and what specific metrics are basically driving this. So 10, on, 10 key on-chain metrics and each one is converted to a percentile rank from zero to 100. So let me quickly explain what percentiles are because that's pretty important in the foundation of how this metric is working. So if a metric has a percentile of, of 80, that means the current value is higher than 80% of all historical values. So that means it's in the top 20% of all time for, for any value in that, in that data set. So if it's at the 50th percentile, it's right at the, the median. Half of history was higher and half of, of history was lower. So this percentile ranking or, or normalization, what we call it in, in statistics, is an approach that makes basically every metric comparable to each other on that same 0 to 100 scale or 0 to 1 scale. So you can compare each metric to another apples to apples because they're all percentile ranked. So the 10 components that are feeding into this are the price versus short-term holder cost basis. So this is where price sits relative to recent buyer entry prices. So the short-term holders, uh, they've bought Bitcoin in the, in, the, in the past 155 days. And then the price versus long-term holder cost basis, the same as the short-term holders, but for long-term holders uh, over 155 days. 
the NUPL, which is the net unrealized profit and loss. This is basically like overall market profitability, the unre unrealized portion of the market profit. Long-term holder profit to volatility ratio is basically similar to NUPL, but it's volatility adjusted for long-term holders specifically. So unrealized profit for long-term holders. And then supply and profit and loss is the percentage of all Bitcoin in, in profit and loss. MVRV is the market value to realize value. So it's the current price versus the market's aggregate on-chain cost basis. So if we track each UTXO, each Bitcoin, what's the current price uh, that it was bought at or the historical price it was bought at and then aggregating the total cost basis. And then the Z-score of the MVRV is just this standardized by, by volatility. And then the realized profit and loss ratio is the profit taking versus this loss realization that we can see on chain. So it's a ratio between the profit and loss. The market cap to thermo cap ratio is the market value versus total mark to total miner investment. So how much miners have have been investing into the into the security of the network on chain. And then finally, we have the Puel multiple, which is was was created by David Puel. It's a daily daily miner revenue versus the annual average. And you can learn more about these specific metrics on the website if you'd like. Uh, all of them have the info uh, in their specific charts. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting in my opinion. So you can see basically which metrics are sort of driving extreme levels and which ones aren't. So let's sort of show one metric at a time, right? So the price versus short-term holder cost basis, we've seen it in prior cycles get really elevated as we see these market cycle tops and subsequently when we see basically market turnaround points we see it get very low and then it can get very overheated at certain parts of the cycle and we've seen that in 2020 2021 2017 even in the 2019 uh sort of from the bear market to this peak right here we've seen it go up same thing this cycle we've seen it sort of go into this range right so each time we hit it we sort of get this pullback each time we hit it, we sort of have gotten this pullback and it's not that overheated right now. So that, that tells me that short-term holders, you know, retail haven't really experienced that same sort of euphoria that they've historically seen. Similarly, you can see it from all different types of perspectives. So you can see it from the long-term holders that is sort of elevated, but not really. You can see from the new pool, this is a little bit more elevated. The long-term holder profits to volatility ratio, this is pretty elevated because we've seen long-term holders taking uh, a lot of profits as well as you know, just them seeing us uh, an ex exceptional amount of, of unrealized profit on chain supply and profit and loss. This has also been sort of elevated and it's sort of chopped from these ranges, this cycle, uh, MVRV it's also elevated, but it's been putting in lower highs, but also lower or higher lows, uh, MVRV Z score. It's also pretty elevated the profit to loss ratio. This has also been getting up there. The market cap to thermal cap ratio has also been uh, somewhat elevated in the past couple of months. And fuel multiple. So this is tr uh, transaction fees, minor revenue. It hasn't really gotten up to those levels we've seen historically. Okay. So let's just set these all to default here. So you've got a mix of some metrics at extreme levels, some elevated, some moderate, and fuel multiple is pretty calm. So depending on which ones you've selected, you can set a, a, uh, an, uh, a, a weight to them. So you can weight some more than the, than others. So like, let's say you wanted to set the PVR higher, the supply and profit and loss higher, uh, MVRV lower, MVRV Z score lower, profit and loss ratio, a bit higher profit price to long-term order higher or lower. You can do whatever you want with it. Right? So you can basically see you want to focus on long-term holder behavior or, or unrealized profit, you can do that. So you're not locked into my exact methodology, right? So you can weight them however you want. Uh, so that's this chart. I want to show another key important chart before ending the video, the short-term holder cost base and just provide a quick update on it. So this shows the average acquisition price of everyone who bought Bitcoin in the last 155 days. Right now, this metric is sitting at around 140, 114K. And currently we're at 122K around there. So we're about 6%, 7% above where recent buyers uh, average cost basis are. 
if we look at 2017, for example, throughout the entire bull run, whenever Bitcoin pulled back to this level, the short term holder cost basis, it, it acted as support basically the entire bull market. It wasn't until we broke below it that we we saw a huge capitulation and then retested it and broke below it again. And then the bull market, the, the bear market essentially caused havoc and short term holders sold at any time they, they could get back above to break even, right? Uh, you saw this similarly in 2021 where we didn't test it that much. We sort of maybe tested a little bit here, but not really. And then we broke below it in the summer around 48K. And then we subsequently saw a dip to 28K. Then we broke above it, held a support, and we saw a new all-time high in November. This cycle, we've actually broken below it a few times during corrections, but we've always sort of reclaimed this level and, and gotten above it and hit new all-time highs. Uh, so more recently, we pulled back to 125, 221. The short-term holder cost basis is sitting at, at around that 114K level, and we're still well above it. So as long as Bitcoin holds above this key level, 114K in my opinion, the bull market structure has historically remained intact. So that's sort of my opinion on what we've seen the past couple of days. If we break below 114K and we can't reclaim it, that would sort of mark a shift, especially this late in the cycle. Historically, Q4 has been a very, very good time for the market. That's when the risk composite indicator I showed, you could look at this for confluence if you'd like. You'd probably start to see these metrics starting to drop rapidly if we started to go below this level. But right now we're about seven thousand dollars above it. We're we're still structurally intact. So so yeah, this is uh just another metric I wanted to show you guys. The com the this metric is completely free. Uh, it's not a pro metric. For on chartinspect.com, go ahead and like uh, go ahead and visit if you'd like. So I, I built this one because I was I was kind of tired of checking the ten different metrics every day. So this makes it a bit easier just to see it uh see the market from an overall on chain perspective, and I can see which metrics I'd, I want to see specifically or, or combine them, right? So if this helped you understand where we are in the cycle, subscribe for more on-chain analysis, drop a comment on what you think, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.